Hi, it's Nick Lotz with Harness. This tutorial is going to walk you through GitOps onboarding using Terraform. You can follow the steps in the video as it takes you through setup. I'll also jump back in here and there to add some additional context. Now you can find this walkthrough on Harness Developer Hub under Tutorials for the CD module, which we've linked in the description. The GitOps setup has a UI-based workflow alongside the Terraform provider steps. We'll be using the Harness Terraform provider to provision the same Harness and cluster resources you could also set up using the UI. Now to get you up and running quickly, we've set up a project that defines the resources specified in the tutorial, so you won't need to write much Terraform code from scratch. Step one then is to clone this GitOps Terraform onboarding project. The assumption is whatever computer you're working from has Git and Terraform command line tools installed on it, and that you can also connect to a Kubernetes cluster from that computer as well. I'll be working from a Google Cloud environment as my cluster is hosted in GCP. So we're gonna go ahead and clone this down. And after that, we can see our repo directory that we can change into. And there, we see the components of this Terraform module. So let's go through each of these. The first file, providers.tf, is where the harness provider is imported from the Terraform registry. It's so Terraform can make API calls to harness and create the resources we need. Next is agents.tf. This file is responsible for creating the GitOps agent entity in harness, and then it deploys the agent to your cluster using your local Kubernetes configuration. Resources.tf creates additional harness definitions, things like the application repo, cluster, service, and environment where it's deployed. Finally, app.tf creates the deployment. It deploys from the repo we defined earlier into a specified namespace in your cluster. And then there's these two files, terraform.tfrs and variables.tf. This variable file declares the variable names and types in the module. For example, where our source code lives and what we're naming the harness entities we create. And tfvar sets our values for those variables. Now you won't need to do any Terraform coding yourself, just about everything's already written up for you. All you'll need to do is set variable values like your harness account info and the names of the resources you want to create. Now, remember variables.tf just contains declarations. We don't change anything here. It's the other file, terraform.tfvars, where we set the values. In fact, tfvars is the only file out of all of them we need to make any changes to. For example, the GitHub repository we're using in this tutorial, I forked it into my own GitHub namespace, so I'll set that here. Now the next step is really important. You're going to want to be careful with how you handle information like your harness account credentials. If we look in variables TF, we do see there's two variable values not set in TFRs. It's your harness account ID and your harness API token. Those values are private, so we won't put them as plain text into version control. You can set them as environment variables, which I've done before recording. You can also use a dedicated secrets manager. Once you have your variables set to the values you want, getting your resources created is as easy as one, two, three. No, really, there's just three commands you need to know. Terraform init, Terraform plan, and then apply. So we'll initialize our working directory with Terraform init. We see the command creates a couple new files, those are just used to manage and enforce our desired state configuration. Then we'll run Terraform plan to preview our changes. This execution plan creates the cluster resources like the agent and deployment, as well as the entities that live in harness. This plan step is really important because Terraform needs to have a firm understanding of what is going to be created before it actually goes ahead and creates it. If the resource doesn't show up in the plan step, it's not going to show up after the apply. That's an inherent part of this declarative style of resource management. To actually implement the plan, we'll run Terraform apply and then confirm. It so happens that running apply does do another Terraform plan as well. And we're off. We're going to fast forward here a little as it can take a few minutes to create all the harness and cluster resources. Ta-da! Nine resources created, just like the plan said. We can do an ls and now see a Terraform state file that keeps track of the now live resources in our environment. We also see a manifest for the Harness GitOps agent, which was installed in our Kubernetes cluster during the apply. And we can run several different kubectl commands to see the resulting Argo setup, the agent, and our deployed application.
And there it is. Remember that this Terraform module created the resources in your cluster environment as well as the entities within Harness itself. So you'll see that some resources were created by looking within your deployments and pods in your cluster and other resources you can verify by looking in the Harness UI. Logging into the Harness UI, we can see our application deployment represented there. That's alongside the other Harness entities created by the apply. The resources shown here in Harness are the same ones we saw on the command line just a moment ago. And going to the GitOps settings, we see the entities for the GitOps agent, the source code repo, and the Kubernetes cluster. If you're all done with your resources and you're ready to clean up, Terraform makes it pretty easy. Just like there is a command to initialize and plan and apply your configuration, Terraform offers a command to clean up your Terraform state. The command to run might be easy to guess. Terraform destroy. It deletes the resources defined in our current Terraform state. Note that the same resources we just created are now set to be deleted. Terraform goes ahead and runs the needed Harness and Kubernetes API calls to delete everything. All right, the command output now shows everything should be gone, but we can also go ahead and double check our work. This is the previous, now stale, view in Harness. And if I refresh my browser, yep, all the entities are deleted. And that's the tutorial. We hope you found it helpful. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can find links to the written tutorial as well as some other resources down below in the description. Happy coding! Now go out there and get shit done.